it's uh, David Barnett once again, and this time I've got a viewer question from Jan. And Jan wants to know, should a business buyer always be represented by a broker? And honestly, no, they don't need to be always represented by a broker. What I always advise is that business buyers should surround themselves with several capable advisors. So people who know what they're doing. An accountant that's helped people buy businesses before and is familiar with due diligence. A lawyer who's done transactions before and, and knows what to do. Now, as far as deal making and negotiation, you know, if you have a good friend who's an experienced business owner who maybe has bought businesses before, that kind of person can help you out. So no, you don't always need to be represented by a broker. But having someone who's an experienced business broker to be one of your advisors can certainly be useful. Now, I'll tell you what's really foolish, though, and I've seen this happen several times, is when people actually engage someone who is completely unqualified to help them buy a business when they could have the help of a business broker for free, basically. Let me tell you a story happened a few years ago, and it was before I was a business broker. It was when I was strictly financing, uh, doing finance brokerage uh, for small businesses. And I was approached by some uh, new, uh, new Canadians who had arrived from Korea, and they were looking for help in financing a convenience store purchase. Now, the convenience store was for sale with a business broker who had been around for a long time. Um, I, I knew of him. Uh, many people had known of him. He was experienced had done lots of transactions. And business brokerage is normally done in dual agency, meaning that the broker represents both the buyer and the seller and has certain obligations and duties to both of them. They had become aware of a certain convenience store that was for sale by their realtor who helped them buy a house. And their realtor said to these new Korean people that had arrived in Canada, I know of a convenience store that's for sale. And then the realtor went to the business broker and said, we are going to represent these buyers in this transaction. And the business broker spoke to the buyers and said, these guys are real estate agents. They don't know what they're doing. If you want to work with them, I will split my commission with them, but I won't represent you. I won't have any duties to you. And in my experience, you should be getting advice directly from me. So being very trusting and the fact that they had already bought a house with the real estate agent, they thought that it would be a good idea to use their realtor to help them buy a business. The problem is, of course, is that the real estate agents didn't know anything about businesses or how to buy them. They came to me looking for advice on how to do the financing and I showed them how to structure the deal and it was going to require some vendor financing on the part of the sellers. So the real estate agents promptly wrote up an offer for the, the price of the business and didn't put in any details whatsoever about the vendor take back note. So the offer was presented and closing day arrived and the lawyer said, where's all the money? And the realtor said, well, we were going to go through with David's suggestion about the vendor take back note. But of course, the seller had never been presented that offer and the seller had never agreed to do the vendor financing. So the deal didn't close and the Korean couple had spent money on their accountant. They had spent money on their lawyer. They had spent money on an engineer to look at the structure of the building. Uh, they spent close to $20,000 and at the end of the day didn't have a business because they chose to go with someone who had absolutely no idea how to buy a business. And so when I say you don't need to be represented by a broker, I mean that honestly, you don't have to, and there are plenty of experienced business people out there who certainly go and negotiate and buy businesses without the help of a broker, but if you're able to get an experienced person to help you, and in the case of a dual agency arrangement, they're being paid by the seller anyway, you'd be foolish not to take advantage of them and, and sign on as a buyer and, and be in an agency relationship. It doesn't bar you from having other advisors around you, such as your accountant, lawyer, or other business people or, or people that you know, to help you and give opinions on what you're doing. Um, but you should not say no to a qualified advisor because you want to use someone who may be much less than qualified. In my business buyer course, 
which is available at www.businessbuyeradvantage.com, I actually go through at length, there's an entire module about building your team and intermediaries, what to look for in an intermediary, what to look for in an advisor, how to vet them and make sure that they really know what they're talking about and they know what they're doing. Because the worst thing that can happen is for you to have faith and trust in an advisor and then discover later that they don't know what they're talking about. There's a a funny thing that uh, I see sometimes in a meme on Facebook. It says, if you think hiring a professional is expensive, wait until you hire an amateur. And I think this is one of those cases. uh, You know, I work with business buyers all the time and end up charging people in the hundreds to low thousands of dollars for advice and help and consulting. Uh, and oftentimes that's for businesses that are going to cost two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000. It certainly makes sense, in my opinion, to spend a few hundred or a couple thousand dollars getting good advice to help you avoid a potentially huge uh, mistake that you might never recover from in your life. Anyway, so that's my opinion on whether or not buyers should be represented by business brokers. And I look forward to your feedback and comments. As always, if you enjoy my videos, please subscribe to my email list. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, you'll make, it'll make sure that you get all the latest content delivered to your email box every week. And if you ever decide that you don't like the content and want to take yourself off the list, it's really easy because I use MailChimp. Thanks, and we'll see you next time. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. That's great. Don't forget, visit www.investlocalbook.com. Sign up for my email list. It's right down here under the welcome video. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.